Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. Last week we talked about COP of heat pumps and I thought we would move into Fan Energy Index or FEI for fans, but then I realized there were several topics that we should probably talk about first. So let's do a few videos on fans, starting with how to read a basic fan curve. Let's get started. So the fan curve shows the operating range of the fan. Fans are pressure dependent, which means that their performance depends on what pressure they're operating against. The airflow, or CFM, is dependent on the static pressure that they're working against. So as pressure goes up, airflow goes down. So instead of drawing out a fan curve, I'm just going to pull one up from a selection I ran. This is for a QEID 24 100 with a very green EC motor operating at 7,500 CFM and two inches of static pressure at sea level. So there are a lot of lines on here, so let's break it down. Across the bottom, you have airflow in CFM. On the left side, you have static pressure in inches, and on the right side, we have brake horsepower. The red line is our fan curve. This is how the fan performs as the static pressure changes. This curve represents the performance at a specific RPM. And I'm using the term fan here to mean the entire assembly, including the drive components. I'll talk about fan speed more in a later video on belt drive and direct drive fans, but just know that at different fan RPMs, the lines would be above or below this one like this. So for now, let's get rid of those lines and just look at this specific fan curve. This point is our operating point, 7,500 CFM at two inches. You can see if the pressure was lower, the airflow along the curve would be higher. You can see this dip over here at about two and a quarter inches of static pressure where you actually have two different CFMs, somewhere around 4,500 and about 5,700 CFM. So which one would it operate at? Well, the fan is gonna hunt between these two airflows at this point. And some fan curves won't have this dip. You'll see something that looks more like this, but what you need to know is you want to avoid operating in any area where the slope is positive. This is the stall region of the fan. In the stall region, the airflow around the fan becomes unstable, and the fan can stall in this area. Stall has to do with the angle of attack of the air on the blades, and usually happens when a too large fan is turned down too low. It negatively affects the fan performance, and sound, and it's just bad for the fan. So that's why this area is grayed out and says do not select in this area. Most fan selection tools won't allow you to even select in this area. This dotted line is the system curve. The system curve is a representation of your system. It's the ductwork and whatever else you need to move the air against. It's important to know that if you change your system, like adding a bunch of extra ductwork or closing off dampers, this changes the system curve and will affect your fan's performance. Changes in your system can shift the system curve left or right. If you add pressure drop to the system, the system curve could shift over here, and now you see that your operating point is at a lower CFM. And now your fan is not producing as much air as you need, or if you're close enough to this gray area, you could end up in the do not operate area of the fan curve. Let's just say that the system pressure goes up, but it doesn't push us into this gray area. You would have to increase your RPM to get the airflow you need. Since this is a direct drive fan, we would just turn up the Veragreen motor, but in a belt drive system, it could be a little more difficult. We'll talk about that as well in the belt drive versus direct drive video. Next, we have this dashed line up here. This is the brake horsepower curve. This shows how much power it'll take to move the air. To find this point, you basically draw a line straight up or down from the operating point. So this shows that it'll take about 3.9 horsepower to operate the fan in these conditions. Let's bring it all back on the screen. So that's an overview of how to read a fan curve. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.